Hello and welcome back to Reaper Pro Tips with me, your host and disembodied hands, Quindy, Justin, and John are hovering ephemera and up up geeks, up up, yay Kiki, good girl, yay happy smiler, come here, there you go, there's your face, good girl, yay, all right happy girl, come on. dog <sighs> we all know it we all know she's just gonna nom on us that's Kiki's thing oh dear me you get all the weather Sonora yes happy Valentine's Day to my whole stream yes wait 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 finger hearts and um Kiki is truly the dog for David and I. Uh, I forgot to show this to you yesterday, but David got a picture of her. She's like, oh, but I just, I found it somewhere and um, I'm just going to take this um, over here. Uh, hope you don't mind. Pathfinder paint. <laughs> She's fascinated with the little paint bottles in the drawer. And somehow she got a paint bottle and she was like, oh, oh, do, 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 uh, please, um, yeah, the look, right? That's the look of the, um, you caught me, right? I, I rescued it. But she was like, this is a toy, right? This is a toy. <laughs> no, it's only when she's in, she was in my office and there were, um, I was digging through paint trying to find, uh, trying to find a clear blue for David. And so there was paint on the floor, and I did not see her grab one. Honest to God, like, boom, she must have been so fast. Uh, she, yeah, Pathfinder paint. <laughs> Mom plays with them, so she wants to, yeah. She's really curious about the drawer over here. She always is snoodling it. She's always, like, going, why is Mommy playing with all these things? So she is funny. But, yeah, that's, so that isn't the right dog for David and me, if that isn't the Kiki picture. You know, I don't, I don't know what is. <laughs> well then she likes um merit blue from uh, pathfinder right pa dogs do like blue though that's why so many dog toys are blue right i hear her out there clicking around what are you doing settling down being a good girl it's cold here today freak freaking cold and I have to go down to do yet another random th thing on my list of things I need to do before I publish my book. Because I realized uh, that um, in order to have a mailing list in this, uh, in this, in this country, possibly in, in every country, I think it's Europe and America for sure, maybe Canada, but there's an act that essentially says you have to have a physical address on your, uh, on your mailing list. And you, as an author, you really don't want to tell people like where you live, right? You don't want to put your home address. So I have to go and get a uh, go and get a PO box <laughs> today, or I should say I need to go pick up the keys to my PO box that I had to purchase um, online two days ago. It's really silly. Ah, uh, ReaperCon Hotel Block is meant to go on sale this Friday at noon Central Time, give or take. Link will be on the ReaperCon site. That is important because y'all know it sells out fast. Remind me of the dates. Uh, it's it's um, always um, Labor Day weekend, right? Let's see here. Do, 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 do. What are the dates this year? There we go. Okay, so it's going to be September for the most part. It's Monday is September 4th, so that means it's going to be the last day of August plus the first, second, third um, minimum. All right. All right. 
That's fair. You have a second choice I'll tell already. That's good to know. That's good to know, Anara. Yeah, it tends to fill up fast. And we are planning on going this year. I don't know if I'm going to teach. Um, I might just hang out and give people critiques and judge the competition and stuff. Since I usually pay my own way for hotel room anyway. And come mostly to see my friends and you guys. Thanks, Turgeon. Yeah, the, the main hotel does sell out super fast, so. All right, well, here we are. We're on Dude. We're on Dude. What do we want to do today, guys? He's looking good. I like his color scheme. I actually really like his color scheme so far. Um, the cream is working well to kind of keep the attention on the upper part of the model. I'm making the, mo the lower part of the model mostly dark. Um, there is a touch of cream down there, but it's, it's overshadowed by the coat, so literally. Um, so it helped. <laughs> Mm, I'm very sniffly today. I don't know what's out there in the air, but allergies are hitting me hard. So apologies if I sniffle a lot. So let's actually... I was using like a rosy shadow was knife for the skin tone. Let's see if I can find it. Yeah, and I actually wanted to play around with something. Um, let's see. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So Cody can't remind you because I won't. I will be in Arizona or almost to Arizona at that point. So um, one color that you can use if you want a more ruddy or flushed face, and you're using rosy shadow or even tan skin, is uh, color from Pathfinder. Um, the the sienna, the kind of the reddish um, skin color that they have. Uh, the shionte 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 sienna. Because, you know, they had to, like, go the GW way and give us all these unpronounceable names. But um, this is, as you can see, actually, a pretty good blush color for Rosy Shadow. Um, and also good for, like, if you're going to do a very pink nose on, say, dwarves, or uh, you're going to do that kind of thing. Or if you want more of a sun-weathered look, you could start with this and highlight up with Rosy Shadow or Tan Skin. Um, it's a very useful skin color for that if you're going for a more natural weathered look and you want to bring out those flushed uh, areas of the skin. Just wanted to talk about that because I had it in my thing. Kurinigo with the 42 month sub. Well, no, it gave it to you for Valentine's Day, Kurinigo. It's a Valentine's Day sub. That's good. That's a positive. Think positive. <sighs> All right, so now let's see what I'm going to do here. I kind of feel like I want to bring this up. I'm going to grab my rosy skin. Mm -hmm. So you can do this a couple of different ways. He had to be 12 you. Exactly. <laughs> so you can, okay, so rosy skin is... Um, Sometimes when you look at skin colors, it's really just, you know, you take the shadow and add white or that the shadow is just is the same, mostly the same color and you, you have less white. But here, rosy shadow definitely has more red in it um, and more brown than rosy skin does. So you can use rosy as a highlight or you can experiment by adding, doing what I do and adding like pure white or Syrian sand or linen white to the rosy uh, shadow to see what kind of color you get. It's going to be different from rosy skin, but it's still going to work. So you don't have to stick to your standard triad if you don't want to. You can still have a perfectly easy to mix and uh, simple way to highlight. So I'm just going to add one drop of Osirian Sand, which is my, my ivory color, Pathfinder 89511, to my uh, rosy shadow. I'm gonna see what kind of color that makes and if I like it, I'll use it. Where is my water bottle? There. It's hiding. Now one thing to point out is that I'll probably have to actually go two to one on this. This face is so small because that's a problem with a lot of facial hair is it's just so small. That you don't have room really for any blending. 
So this is going to bring it up more, more of a rosy skin color. Um, but it's actually, it's not as bright. And by bright, I mean kind of saturated. It's close to rosy though. But Rosie's, um, Rosie's pinker, actually, because I used the uh, Osirian Sand, so that yellow brought it up a bit more like a fair shadow with a little bit rosier tone. It's an interesting thing. And so we got very little room for highlights or shadows in here, and we've also got to still block in the eyes and do some lining. So I'm going to do that before I even do the rest of this. I also need the hair to be mixed up again, the base color. Yeah, I usually get in because I'm a Hilton Honors member and I've got points to spend. I think they always reserve like a couple room for rooms for Honors members, but I don't know. We'll see how, how it goes this year. If you can't get the block, get the block, because you get a better deal, for sure. Um, I'm going to do two drops of water, because we've got a very... When you've got a really fair skin tone, when you're lining around a face, and you've got a fair skin tone, you usually don't want to use the liner at full strength, and you may even want to mix a little bit of your skin tone into it. Um, because if you have something super dark with super pale skin, it, it looks odd, usually. Um, so I've thinned this a bit. I may add one little bit, a little bit more water. Or a little bit more paint, rather. I want. I still want it to give me a decent line. And we'll line around where the hair meets the face, and we'll also do the eyes. All right, and we haven't lined around where the hat um, comes up to the face yet either. So let us do this lining. Let's get close. Even though the, the hair and the skin are very different colors, if you don't line, it's going to look really muddy. It's going to look like things are running into each other. You can see how the little dark line between air, other areas of the sculpt is bringing out those details and making everything sharp. Uh, and we want that on the face as well. David and I already had our Valentine's Day dinner. We did it on Saturday. Because we figured that it was going to be a pain in the butt to do it on the actual day. And since it's a made-up holiday anyway, we decided to just go with it. He, he actually said Happy Valentine's Day to me this morning, and I'm like, it's not. Saturday was our Valentine's Day. Or yesterday. Because I made him steak last night. So I'm going to darken, darken in the eyes. Sorry, got to stay on camera. When you're this zoomed in, it's so easy to get off camera. As I think Rhonda has noted recently in her videos as well. So I'm just going to do like a very simple line, and I'm not blending it in at all. But I will be going back with this hair color, and, and by putting the hair color over the top of these lines a little bit, I'll be able to blend it. And then seeing that shadow there. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty cold and awful here. And I want to line between the mustache and the nose, which can be a little difficult, but let's try to get that line in there to define the bottom and then the nose. I got some of the hair color on the nose. I can see that. <coughs> oh, nice. Nice, Agent Marble. I can never see Titanic. For one thing, I'm terribly afraid of drowning and big water. So, like, that, that's just a no right there. And the other part is I can never take Leonardo DiCaprio seriously as a love interest. It's kind of like, I, there's some actors that I just can't. 
Do you guys have actors like that where you just like you look at them and you just can't take them seriously as a love interest? I run into problems with Tom Hanks on that also. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, Kurt Eagle, right? And he's, I don't know, he's just like, he's a fantastic actor, so I feel bad, like, panning him. But I just can't. I just, there's just something about him I just can't. So I'm trying to get the eyes placed here, and it's hard to see them. Obviously, I need to move my camera up a little bit so that I'm more in, more in focus. There we go. It's really quite hard to figure out where they are when they're sunken under the big eyebrows, bushy eyebrows like that. So these will not be... <laughs> cool, Quindy. Yeah, romantic movies. Who wants to watch those? Well, okay. There's a couple that I probably could think of watching, but normally I like adventure movies. Like my 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 idea of a good time if I'm going to watch something is sitting down with the original Indiana Jones movie or something. I like some serious movies too, but <laughs> yeah, I can't do horror either. I need to get this. Touched up on the nose. So yeah, little faces like this. You can see how the highlight is much brighter, by the way. Ooh, Borderlands, cool. Yeah, we got the DLCs for Tiny Tina, but we uh, haven't played, we haven't had time to play them. Because I've been concentrating on Overwatch because I really, really want the, the epic level skin, the legendary skin this time on the Battle Pass. So I'm like, I've been playing more Kiriko, so I'm like, I really want that Hamaterasu skin. All right, get a little bit. I need to get my hair color mixed up again so that I can touch up this guy. Oh, really? Except that if I didn't, if I wasn't like terrified of poisonous spiders, then I could watch that. Cause the fact that you've mentioned that, channeling Bill Murray and Caddyshack, makes me want to see that dang movie. But But horror films and I, yeah, uh, I used to watch them, but. Yeah, I also have a very active imagination, so horror films are a hard sell for me. Plus, I don't like, you know, I just don't, I can't watch graphic violence or anything, so. Unless it's really comic book. And even then, I don't enjoy it, but I can watch it. So I'm just touching up the, uh, the hair here. Oh, great. That movie is a big nope. Yeah, right. Yes. Like, I guess I can watch, um, like, pulp action or sci-fi with violence in it, as long as it's not too realistic. As long as it's plainly not anything that can happen in this world. Then I can handle it. Yeah, the old horror stuff is different. But even then, like, suspense, like, I just have a hard time with it. It's not a pleasant, for me, suspense is not a pleasant feeling. It's that, you know, 
psycho killer is waiting in the corner, you know, to kill you and you have no way out. It's that kind of feeling for me. And so I just like, don't like it. Lost a bit of his lower lip here. But I can watch some stuff that you'd think I couldn't like. Um, like I can watch Kill Bill and I can watch Aliens. You know, I can watch that stuff because that stuff is either Kill Bill is so comic booky, it's more pulp action, and uh, Aliens is is blatantly sci-fi, so I can do that. Oh, I can't watch them. I get too heebie-jeebie about it. Marvel. <laughs> I get the heebie-jeebies. I cannot lie. Yeah, I just I I prefer like I really. I love action and, like, adventure with some comedy. I love the Indiana Jones movies. Like, honestly, I went to see every single one of them in the film, uh, in the theater as they came out, the first three anyway. Um, even though there's some violence in there, it's, 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 again, it's pulp action violence, like Kill Bill, so it's like... And there's some funny, right? There's some funny along with the, the other stuff, so... Oh, yeah, you like to be scared. See, and I don't enjoy it at all. I, I, I scare myself enough. <laughs> all right, like, just trying to look at his eyes. Like, it's so, they're really sunk up under those eyebrows. And I've got to get in there with a the highlight and trim them up because they got really blobbly. Well, yeah, but that was kind of the point, Kerniko. <laughs> that whole movie was just terrifically tongue-in-cheek, and uh, I liked it. I know, I didn't think I'd like it, but... I ended up liking it. But I don't watch, understand that, like, I don't watch other movies either. So if you're a big movie watcher, you would get irritated at that. Where I wasn't, wouldn't even spot half the movie um, copies, right? So for me, I was fine with everything. Like, the more, and it's funny, I've, like, turned into my mother. I used to be like, seriously, Mom? When she just had no interest in watching something that my dad was watching that I wanted to watch. But I got so selective about my visual media as I got older. Now I just really don't, I'd, for, I'd prefer to read a book. Like there's, a, there's some exceptions, very small exceptions. Small field, but. Maybe it's that so many movies I've watched have more or less disappointed me, so it's like... Oh no, I missed an ear. He's got an ear here that I totally didn't paint skin tone. Yeah. Yeah, if you just watch it as one long movie, it probably was better. Yeah, because Kill Bill 1 is like setting up everything, right? So it's going to be slow. When you've got it, that's the problem with a duology. Like, you have to strive to make the first part ex part exciting and interesting, but you can't overdo it because you have to have something to ramp up to. As somebody who just wrote a duology, I can talk, to, I can speak to this. I like seeing the only spy thrillers that I like are James Bond because, and, I'm, and I like the funny ones the best. <laughs> the ones where, where there's some humor, I like the best. Or the campy, the really campy one. Yeah. Yeah, Japanese action. I know I really enjoyed those parts of it too, Big, Big Chimpo. Yeah. Oof. Yuck. Yeah, that would be... See, I could read it, Corsair. I could read it, but I couldn't, like... When it's on the screen, because I'm not desensitized to violence, visual violence, because I never watched a ton of TV when I was a kid, um, it really upsets me, like viscerally does. 
So I have to watch it with that stuff. I'm afraid I'm a kind of a wimp on that. All right, I'm going to paint in this ear now that I have the rosy color. Actually, you know, maybe I'll use my Chiranti Sienna. Why not? Why not? Let's see, actually, I've got a dot of it right here. I'll use it. So it's kind of a pinky color, see? So it works well for rosy things. Yeah, I like, I love Hunt for Red October with Tom Clancy. I, I tend to like more, um, like intellectual thrillers, less physical dangerous thrillers. And so Hunt for Red October was, was one of my faves because it's very, there's, there's little physical danger, but there's a lot of like, like greater danger and like psychological, like suspense. I like that. So I'm going to get the edge of the ear with the I'm also going to use this uh, Sienna to, um, the problem with, the problem with using it is that it's very close to the hair color. So I gotta be careful. Um, but because I'm only using small touches of it, it's probably not going to clash. It's mostly when you use colors that are close to each other, when you're doing your main color scheme that you run into the clashing thing. Um, here, what the danger is that the colors will just run together. You won't really be able to see the parts that are closer to the hair color. Uh, as well, but I'm going to try it. I'm going to put it a little bit Political intrigue and suspense. Oh, yeah, maybe I should recommend that one to David because he's always looking like He's always looking for stuff that he can binge He likes to binge stuff while he paints And uh he would, he'd have to stop and watch, really watch the action sequences, but the political suspense would be his bag. He likes legal dramas. I cannot stand legal dramas. Oh, funny, Turgeon. Interesting. Yeah, some anime is really top notch. That's true. Most of my anime I watched while I was like, there was a period of time where I hung out with a bunch of my gaming group were into anime. So I ended up seeing a lot of anime during that time, but that's like a long time ago. I'm not up on current anime. All right, so a little bit of that Shuante Sh Sienna underneath the cheekbone here to give him a little bit of blush. Oh, interesting, Kerniko. Yeah, I can see that, how it would make you focus more so it would pull you in more and then you'd get scared more. Yeah, I can see that. So more of the Shuante Sh Sienna. I need to learn to say that name. I have just this little dab on top of my palette and it keeps wanting to dry, so I had to pop some water in it. I have so much stuff to do and so, so little time to do it. Interesting. I'll make a note of the, I'll make a note of the perfect blue one, just in case, in case I feel like, um, where can you find it? Where can you watch it?
Oh, Pan's Labyrinth was too much for me. I mean, on one hand, I should have loved it, and there were parts that I did because Fairy Tale, right? Because it's got that that weird am ambience, but the real world stuff like just was scary and disturbing to me. And then you know, the, kind of the crossover was just yeah, it was too much for me. Way too weird and violent at points. Like, I'm all for spooky fairy tale or kind of creepy fairy tale. So I'm getting into the, um, the Shawanti Sienna um, underneath both cheekbones, and now I've added it to both sides of the nose. You can see how that's given it, um, given the face a little bit more depth as far as color. I'm going to go down here and get the lower lip a little. Brings the lower lip closer to the hair, but it also makes it the right color. There. Yeah, I didn't get to the last 20 minutes, Turgeon. It was too much. Yeah, I'm not I'm not either, Kroniko, because, you know, part of me already understands that and really doesn't want it shoved in my face. Like, you know, I know there are terrible things in the world. I really don't feel the need to watch them on my TV. Um, I'm going to pink out his knuckles as well with the Shawanti Sienna. You can see how that's just a perfect color for that, too. I think I've seen Lovecraft Country because you know that kind of like crosses the line. Maybe I'll start watching anime again. I'll have to hit you up, Big Chimpo, for your favorites. I'm so like out of touch with the genre at this point. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. I mean, you don't even need to, like, I'm just like, I mean, I had a friend die to violence, random violence, and I just don't, like, I don't go there. I don't need to, I don't need to be reminded of it. So it's cool when people, I mean, I understand that a lot of people really enjoy it. They, they, you know, that's cool. Not for me. Not for me. So just kind of blocking in some of these red tones. That's true. That's true, Kodiak. And there's a psychological reason for that, right? Is that the human brain focuses on bad stuff more than it remembers good stuff. It's actually a physiological thing and it's something we do. So yeah. And, and so when you show us a lot of bad people type of movies, our brain's going to remember that because when we're watching these things, a lot of our physiological signals are like, un our brain can't tell the difference, can't tell that it's not real. Right. And so Essentially, your brain f focuses on that, and you're exactly right. It's like you're, you're more likely to be, you know, to remember that sort of thing and for your brain to focus on it. Oh, yeah, I kind of, yeah. Okay, so Monster I haven't heard of, but I've, I do love Princess Mononoke and Cowboy Bebop. So, in fact, I got, I got uh, David to actually watch Bebop. He watched the, the show, and then he, then he was convinced to watch the anime. Monster and perfect blue. All right, cool. Yeah, it is Quindy, right? Because you can't. You've got to watch the subtitles. You can't. Um, you can't do other stuff, right? Yeah, that's kind of my thing is I'm looking for stuff to do while I knit and things like that. Although Overwatch League is about to start up again, so my esports addiction will be back. Uh, 
So I'll have that, but yeah. Because I, I do enjoy sitting in front of the... Like, I don't enjoy sitting in front of the TV any other time, but I like to sit in front of the TV and knit. But it has to be something that I can not have to, like, pay all my attention to, you right? So since the hat is going down further over this side of the face, I'm keeping it a little bit in shadow. We're bringing more light over on this side. But you can see it's, like... It's blocky, but it's, you really, like, on a face, you, it's so small, you don't need perfect blending. You can see the blockiness of it on the camera because we're zoomed in so much. But in person, like, once I soften this one line, you won't be able to see it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay, got it. Perfect blues, 80 minutes. Okay. Yeah, maybe I'll give it a try. Thanks. I do enjoy a lot of um, anime conventions. Uh, all the anime I got exposed to mostly was in college when I, my gaming group was into it. Um, but I also grew up watching Thundercats, right? And so that very, very, though American, very anime. Um, and I loved that show. I would race home from school to watch Thundercats. And so, um, and so there are parts, definitely parts of the anime-ish parts of that, that I adored that totally transferred my love over to some anime when I first started watching it. But like... A lot of my, my gamer friends in college, my gaming group, one of them was a, like an older, a little older than the rest of us. And he, he essentially, we watched the entire Battletech, like, or, um, um, you know what I mean? Robotech, the entire Robotech, sorry, everything. We watched the entire thing. And uh, then uh, Rama one half, I really liked Rama. It was so silly, but I really liked it. Um, and uh, Cowboy Bebop and stuff. And Princess Mononoke. So I have very limited anime like exposure, but the classics, I've seen the classics. So huge content warning. Like violence or what sort, Babatook? Because if it's too much, then I'm not gonna enjoy it. Okay, it does actually contain. Alright, then I can't. Yep. Thanks for the thanks for the tip off. Yep. Yeah, I, I won't be able to. I mean, I might be able to handle it, but I won't enjoy it. We'll cross that off. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for the tip, Baba. Yeah, I am a I am a fragile flower. I am not. It it actually physically upsets me. Uh, to see too much realistic violence. And you know what? I'm okay with that. Like, some of my friends are like, oh, don't you hate being, you know, you should just desensitize yourself. You should just watch it. And I'm like, no. I actually enjoy the fact that, I, that violence still has a, you know, impact on me. Like, I, I take it seriously. I don't want to somebody who can just watch that stuff and not have a reaction. Well, that is me. And the rest of you can enjoy your violent movies. <laughs> I know a lot of you do. <laughs> well, because there are other good things about the movie, right? It's not just about the violence. It's not like y'all are just watching for the violence. You're watching for the good story and there happens to be violence in it. I just can't do it. Oh, interesting. Oh, really? Okay. Hold on. Let me write that down, Kiro. Kiro. Kaiokara. And the last word is... Ah, Mao. Okay, cool. Yeah, exactly, Kodiak, yeah. Oh, KKM is a fantasy adventure? Yeah, I would totally. Yeah, I haven't seen Full Metal Alchemist. That's another classic I've seen. I think that's, that counts in the classics of anime um, category. 
Alrighty, I'm gonna actually go in a little bit with some highlights. See, it's it's very hard to blend areas that are this tiny, and usually you've got to glaze or you've got to get your paint really thin. Um, but again, you don't need to get it perfect for it to look very good to the naked eye. When you zoom in, you'll be able to see flaws. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it is awesome. All right, I need to mix up another highlight here. Let's grab my screen sand. Okay. Oh, fun, fun, Corsair. Enjoy it. Enjoy. Enjoy the foods. All right, I need to get a little bit lighter. Since I'm just adding Osirian sand in my rosy shadow, I'm going to do a one to one this time. Get a lighter color. And then some water. Yeah, Fantasy Adventure is my shtick, uh, Quindy. So that, that works for me. Because that's what I write. It's funny, there's a girl, uh, oh, okay, cool. Oh, interesting. So which one should I look for, Kernico? All right, let's get some, I think this might have gone too thin, we'll see. Mixed up a highlight, but I feel like it might be a little much. Have the top of the cheekbones. That's very bright. He looks grumpy. He looks very grumpy. Somebody has stepped on his lawn. That's the thing I don't enjoy about anime, is the fact that after, if they get a successful one, they do 50 zillion iterations on it, and you never know what to watch. That some of it's going to be crap, and some of it's going to, like, be alternate world, and some of it's going to be, like, alternate world crap, and you're just like, you're like, why? So I'm going to get the nostrils there. Yeah, for me, it's like, all I want to know is like the best iteration of the story and I'll watch that because I don't have the time to watch a whole bunch of different stuff trying to figure out which one is the best for me. Oh, okay. Kind of like Critical Role. Where I watched like the animated series and then took up with the actual bods. I see. I see. So. Making notes, making notes. Hmm. 
We'll see. First, let's see if I actually get back into it enough to like look up this uh, the KKM one. Then I might go looking for some other stuff to watch. We'll see. All right. I'm trying to make sure my hair is really solidly base coated, and for the most part, it is. But we spent a lot of time trying to get the face, like, yeah, decent. Yeah, David really liked Arcane. I saw a little bit of it. Yeah, I just don't... It's, it's funny, but I just don't really watch television. Um, it's like... Like I watch, like I watched Game of Thrones because I read the books and I wanted to see how they interpreted it. Um, and they're just rare. It's just, it's funny though. I just, I don't watch everything because uh, if you guys saw my like daily schedule, I have so little time for fun. Like, it's, uh, it's very. My time is squished. So it's like I have like one hour in the evenings tops to do knitting or painting or playing computer games with David or like that. So that's why I don't watch TV because it would take me months to watch a show and I'd never have time for anything else that I value. So, but yeah, I mean, I don't have a lot of free time. So I usually don't pick up TV stuff unless it's really in my wheelhouse. Yeah, exactly, Quindy. Yeah, it's the time commitment. I had too much to do. Um, I want to block in his eyes, and I don't want to... So one quick trick, if you're trying to do 28 millimeter eyes, you never want to use pure white, because it's too stark, it looks too unnatural. So usually you want to use something like weathered stone. But if you only have pure white and like your liner on your palette, one of the easy tricks you can do is to just take a tiny bit of your liner and mix it into your pure white. And it gives you that stone color once you mix it in. So you can essentially just spot, spot, uh, mix it. And then you'll have an off because you never want to use a pure white. Yellow whites are better than the gray whites, but gray whites work just fine. I mean, yeah. Yeah, that's just it, is that when I do spend the time to watch media, I typically, like, don't really, like, I'm like, okay, that was okay. <laughs> what David and I tend to do is we pick, we watch a lot of cooking shows and baking shows, obviously, but we do that, like, that's our half hour before bed. Like, we go and suggle in bed and watch TV. Um, that's, like, my only real television commitment. If you think that it's too, let's see. Well, I'm gonna try that. I'm gonna try that color. I'm gonna try this uh, gray white and see what I got. I'm happy we have Netflix because otherwise I wouldn't be able to watch Bake Off and that is a show that I truly do enjoy. But again, it takes us forever to watch a single season of Bake Off because we have so little time for it. All right, I mixed a little bit of water into that. I think I, I don't watch a lot of movies specifically because I understand too much about screenwriting now and I can predict. Like, I see, if I can see the beats too much, I get, I get kind of jaded. And so, so few movies really feel like, like, like um, live up to my expectations, so. Some of them are fun, but... I would rather read like when it comes down to it that's kind of the that's the the way i enjoy ingesting media all right so i got that gray color so you can bring out the eye all 
I didn't, Pendrake. David did. All right, so that is pretty good. Let's try it on the other side. I may need to lighten it up, and then when I do lighten it up, I'll probably add a little Assyrian sand. It's pretty good, though, with this color. So you want the eye to come out, but you don't want it to, like, be this huge blob of white staring color. This could be a little lighter, so I'm going to grab my Syrian sand. I'm going to put a drop in. I think David enjoyed it. He didn't think it was like stunning theater, but you know, he he thought it was uh, thought it was fun. But David a lot like David has a lot more time in his life for like leisure than I do leisure. He's always like shocked at how much I work, but without David, I would actually be a workaholic. With David, I'm I'm just a barely not workaholic. <laughs> I don't know. Is it safe for Top Gun spoilers, guys? You have a theory about that film? Safe with me. I never care about spoilers because the experience of watching or reading something is always more interesting than the spoiler. So I actually don't care about getting spoiled, spoiled on stuff. Even if I know the ending, the way the, the writer or the filmmaker gets there is always fun and interesting to me. There we go. So having his eyes be a little bit sh shadowed because of those bushy eyebrows is not, uh, not a bad thing. Yeah. Yeah. Go for it. Go for the spoiler. What's your, th what's your theory? What's your theory, Kernico? Tell us. Tell us, and those who've seen the movie maybe can verify or not. Yeah, that's true. Like, if it's been a year, like, okay, anybody who hasn't seen Top Gun and still wants to see Top Gun and doesn't want to be spoiled on Top Gun, stop watching. <laughs> You know what I mean. All right. I think I will actually do the eyeballs. Um, where is my... You want to switch. You don't want to use a liner. Um, I know, like, doing doing just a black-brown is a, is a generally a good um, policy with you doing eyes on 28 mil, but uh, you want something that's going to be really dark and really solid, and so use walnut is my recommendation, because uh, walnut is just going to cover so much better than any liner. Oh no, Quinty. We've been too intrigued. We've been too, uh, too interesting on stream today. We've distracted Quinty from her work. All right, my walnut is clogging on me as it is. Okay, theory is this. Oh, interesting. Oh, funny. That's really funny, Kernico. Now, if I ever do watch the movie, I'm going to be watching it with that in mind. That's hilarious. Oh. That is pretty awesome.
It's like it's like the M Night movie with the little kid who can see dead people, except that it's like without the dead reveal at the end. <laughs> I think that's awesome. I think that's an awesome theory. All right, so I've got my walnut. I've thinned it just a little bit, about four to one, which is enough for it to still make. And if you're trying to make a dot and eye and you want to make sure that it's nice and dark, you get your paint thinned down and then use your brush and do some tiny dots to see how dark they are. Yeah, so I can get some fairly dark dots there, so I think I've got a good one. And as always with eyebrows go in, I, these are fairly, like, it's hard to see them. I d and they're I'm not very wide, so I may need to make him looking to the side. Um... And he's kind of looking that way, so I probably should make him look into the side this way. Uh, when you've got, like, short eyeballs like this where they're not terribly long and you don't have a lot of room to elongate them because they're really deeply set, making your model look to the side is a good gambit. Like so. And he's like glaring at somebody. And then I can grab some pure white, thin it way down and get little, hopefully catch light in that one eye. When to come back into his hands as well with the skin. So the trick with catch lights in eyes is that you really, really need to, you need to find that, that perfect balance between um, a thinned white that's thin enough to come off your brush with a tiny fleck, um, but still opaque enough to actually leave a, a mark in the iris slash pupil. So here I'm going to be going about two to one to see what I can do. And the problem with trying to do catch lights is that it's very, very um, possible that you're just going to mess up the eye. I'm only going to do one over here because this is definitely overshadowed by the hat, so I don't think there would be a catch light. little one but it's very hard too much actually I think I think I went too much let me get this back in it may just be it's too far under the brows because his eyes are so overshadowed by those big bushy brows that's funny Ben right or he's grumbling, or he's grumbling about something. Somebody let the hippogriffs play on the lawn, and now there are tons of, uh, tons of potholes. <laughs> oh, I used to. That was my college GM. He wanted to do, like, a game right away in the morning, and then he wanted to do, like, Battletech after lunch, and then do another game in the evening. It was crazy. But he always wanted to start too freaking early. All right. So I think I'm just going to just go with that as far as it goes for this guy.
But yeah, there's no way that would fly now if I had a GM. There's a little bit of a area here where I had a little bit of flashing coming up. Yeah. Alrighty, let's get the rest of the skin figured out. Oh, on a Saturday, yeah, on the weekend. Ugh, yuck, yuck, Polly, yuck. Eight AM is just indecent. What are these people? Senior citizens? Like <laughs> just because my parents are always up at the crack of dawn, right? And I'm just like I can see it though, right? As gamers get older, you're gonna have the uh the people who are always up at the crack of dawn with their, you know, the people who've been playing D D since they were like they're like in their sixties now and they're like Eh, we're all up anyway. Breakfast D and D game. So again, putting a little bit of that Chauvante Sienna in there just to get more color variation. Yeah, I prefer evening. Yeah, I get. I, you're right, Anara. That's with me too. I feel like um, I get a lot done in the morning and early afternoon. Like honestly, if I didn't have to stream, I could get a lot more done in the mornings nowadays. But this is what it is. This is my stream time now. So much as I would love to cannibalize it for like writing or something, I'm keeping it as a stream time. So I'm going to start kind of like toning down the toning down that um, Sienna a little bit. I'm going to do a little bit of uh, Kind of glazing, covering it up. Just leave a little hints of it. So I was talking yesterday to one of my coaches. We were discussing the Arno Lazaro um, FAQ 2 book that AK put out after they did the Kirill one. And this is kind of an example of that style of painting and I we were talking about it because like a lot of us feel like we hate the ugly phase of our models like most models go through kind of an ugly stick phase um but there are a lot of wonderful painters are now among them that uh that do very blocky very sketchy initial coats of paint and the nice thing about looking and I love that part of that book uh, specifically because he shows you, he pulls back the curtain and shows you what it looks like at the ugly stick phase. Um, and he's not afraid to do that. And what that, what that does is it really gives everybody, when you look at something like that, it gives you permission to do it too and to not judge yourself for it. So, and there are some pretty ugly stick like pictures. Like you're like, wow, that turned into X. Wow. And it's just a lot of refining after that. It is, but you know, like it's it's also heartening to look at to somebody who's an amazing painter and like see their ugly stage and then look at how they refined it. Yeah, toddlers really interrupt your D and D. <laughs> yeah, maybe toward the end of the stream, I'll I'll whip out that book and show you what I mean. But that's kind of why I'm like, I started out very blocky on this hand and now I'm just trying to refine it. I still want to keep those reddish tones because hands have them. Um, so I'm just going to mess around and go a little bit back and forth and blend and glaze and see what I can do. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, no travel time. Yep.
So as we continue to just kind of try to blend in some of this stuff. Um, ugly stick phase. You hit the mini with an ugly stick. Like, like your initial, uh, your initial attempt looks like you hit the mini with an ugly stick instead of, uh, actually painting. <laughs> The downside of, of the ugly phase is that, um, you know, it takes a lot of time to refine it and make it good again. But um, the upside, like, I like that color I'm getting over the knuckles now. Yes, exactly. Like a magic wand, but instead of making you rich or pretty, it makes things ugly. Yes, exactly. Thank you, Inara. Thank you. <laughs> But yeah, so there's always like, mo almost all minis have an ugly phase. And sometimes I get very, you know, persnickety because I'm such a precise painter. I'll get persnickety and, and like, I really hate the ugly stage. But I'm trying to talk myself into enjoying the ugly stage more. And just learning how to work it around. Yes, and the magic wand in this case is a paintbrush, exactly. You guys got it. You got it. But yeah, a lot of people hit the ugly phase and they stop. But in reality, we just kind of shaded, but that hand is actually looking pretty good now. Got to look at it from the top. So I've got my, and we're staring at it really close. So the question is, does it read okay at a distance? Yeah, it does. Reads like skin. I need to get a little bit more highlighted through here. A little more blending. Yes, but my, my brush is not cursed. It's just a logical, it's just a, a natural stage that a creative project tends to go through. It's like, it's like sh um, shitty rough drafts. Like everybody has to give themselves permission to write. A crappy rough draft because no matter what you do or how perfect you are you know there okay there are probably people in the world that and, and Anne Lamott says this in her book because she has like a chapter on crappy rough drafts and she's like there are people in the world who can turn out a perfect copy of their story out of the top of their head without rewrites and we hate them <laughs> we hate them all they have no friends just ignore those people and concentrate on yourself But yeah, that's just the the mess is part of the growth process in this case. <laughs> yeah, Kernika. Well, that's a whole nother problem. That is a whole nother problem. There. All right. I like that rosy tone of the skin there. And I like it down here. And I like it on the face. And it looks like it matches. So I'm good with that. His hands are gigantic. And his head is a tiny pinhead. I just noticed that. But yeah, when you're doing underpainting techniques, which are very popular these days, um, Zenith uh, priming is one of the more basic of them. Um, when you're doing those underpainting stages, when you start doing colored underpainting especially, it starts to very much look like you hit it with the ugly stick. Um, but it really isn't like a big problem to fix or to refine. All right, so skin tones, lovely, lovely. I wonder if I should do the question is, can I remember what I did to do the um, the purpley, purpley fur? I kind of feel like it's walnut with the white. Let's see what I can do. I've got this lighter gray that I use for his eyes. But maybe I want to put um, a little bit of uh, nod bone in it. Yeah, exactly. That's true. What Agent Marvel said, Kernico. Post it on the Discord so we can all like ooh and ah over it. And tell you how lovely it is. Yeah. But 
But yeah, interestingly, I... Well, yeah, if he's got giant hands, he would need a giant sword hilt. Like, uh, if, if he, uh, like... You know, like... If he had a tiny sword hilt, he wouldn't be able to actually hold it. Uh, so I've put some, uh... Nod bone into this... Walnut plus white, or brown liner plus white, so I get a more creamy color. Creamy gray. For my wolf pelt here, or whatever pelt it is. So what the color I end up with is like this, which is kind of like a grayed out bone color. Um, if you're doing like wolf pelts or kind of gray fur, um, using like a grayed out bone color is actually a pretty good option for highlighting. I made this a little warmer. Everybody thinks that. Great, girl. You just have to remember, you have to understand that it's just your brain. And worse, it's not even your whole brain. Like, if you guys, okay, if you guys read about these studies, like, this is pretty crazy stuff. But you know how you always feel like you have several voices inside your brain, just like inside out? It's true. You do. The different parts of your brain actually talk to you at different times. There is, the you that you think is you is actually different parts of your brain that are all talking at different times. It's crazy. So, like, when you really, really know that you shouldn't eat, like, you really don't want to eat the next chocolate chip cookie because you want to lose weight, but then, like, you want to eat the next chocolate chip cookie anyway, like, that's actually two parts of your brain that are actually conflicting. Like, both of them are you. It's just different parts of you. Like, the, the part that really wants the cookie is the brain stem, which is the ancient lizard brain, and it just wants lots of sugar so you can it can make you fat and you can live through the winter, right? It doesn't understand that we have, uh, like restaurants and grocery stores now. So it's kind of crazy. I don't know how we all stay sane. Like, this is insane. <laughs> Maybe, okay, I'm just for this, I'm gonna show you the ugly stick that Arno has in this book. Hold on, the, the best ugly stick ever, hold on. Ugly stick mini. One moment. Let me get it. Stay. Let me see. I gotta find it now. I gotta find it. It's in the later parts, I know. That's, yeah, it's getting close. It's getting close. Let me see if I can find. It really is like it's just... I almost wonder if you overaccentuated it. Let me see here. For those who don't know, this is the book I'm talking about. It is a beautiful, beautiful book. Um, and many of the minis in it are painted by he and his friends, and they are all gorgeous. Um, so it may feel you, it may make you like go, no way. Ah, there we go. All right. So this is, this is what, like, I decided I really loved this book about. Let's see if I can get it under the camera. All right. Oh, I'm tilty. How, how did I get so tilted? I'm not even playing Overwatch. There we go. Um, so his underpainting for a face. There you go. Like, serious. Serious, this is how, this is how he paints. Like, serious. That's how it starts. And then it refines, right? So, like, that is serious ugly stick, folks. But then it refines, right? Then it, then it refines, and you start getting more, like, you start putting, like, layers of thin paint over the top of it, and then those red magenta areas become more blended in. But you can see how he's blending it in, right? So it's just... It doesn't matter if you start out with the ugly stick phase. Like, you can start out that way and still end up with a beautiful piece. Um, it just takes patience and blending. But yeah, this is his anatomy uh, chapter. And uh, so he's talking about, like, blood flow under the skin and musculature. Uh, he's got some great... I, I, say, I think that's the best... Um, he's got awesome skin tone stuff in here, too. Let me find... There's other, other kind of work-in-progress shots that are not quite as... Uh, like beginning stage is that but you can still see where he started like that and then he refined it let's see oh yeah here we go so 
This is the FAQ from AK, FAQ2. The first one was done by Kirill, and this one is the Arno, Arno Lazaro. Um, yeah, thank you, Quindy. Um, and then this is one where he shows you, this is one of his, uh, like, this is a step, a couple steps after, like, the real ugly phase, but you can see that it's still really, really kind of sketchy, right? You can see his light, which is really nice on this, uh, where the light is coming from. But, um, but you can still see, like, he starts out really, really messy, and then he refines it. Like, there's just colors just bleeding all over. He's neatened up that one, like I said, it's a little bit further, but, um... But yeah, and then he's then just got amazing. I don't know if he's we've got a picture of that face of that one. We have the body that was right next to it. Hold on, let me see. But it's a nude. I don't think I can show it on Twitch. Let me look um, to see if I can find where that face might come in. Oh, although the one here's the finished one. Of this, of the two girls with the selfie, the two. One second. Do, 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 do. So out of that, really blocked in. Then when he finishes it, it's really tight and very cartoon and very neat. So, but he starts really, really blocky, sketchy, messy. And then, and then, as you see, he neatens up the edges, gets his color, you know, gets his light in, and then he finishes it out. So. It takes a long time. This kind of this kind of um, painting does take time, but then almost all really good painting takes time. Anyway, I just really love that. When I saw that, I knew that 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 this book was absolutely going to be cool for me. Yeah, and if you have nerve damage, maybe work on bigger things than twenty eight. Um, because 28s are going to be more challenging, right? Because they take tighter fine motor. So if you have a real problem with tight fine motor, try to go up to maybe 54s or 75s. Um, they're bigger, they'll take longer to paint, but it'll be a lot more forgiving. Because you won't have to get as tight with the detail. Yep, and that, you know what, that in... In a, that's absolutely true, Baba. Like, and it's the same with writing. And all the creative pursuits are like this. It's like the biggest barrier to to like if if first of all, if it's your goal to become a better painter, right? It isn't everybody's goal. Some people just like to paint, and they don't care. They just want to finish models and have them look good enough that they're happy with them, right? But for those of us who really would like to paint better than we do. And I'm still in that school. I really like Arno's work in there. Um, you know, I'd like to try his style. But, uh, but yeah, for those of us who would like to get better, often it is just the belief in ourselves or the lack thereof that um, stops us. Certainly with writing it, it is, because, I mean, writing is, is actually arguably worse than painting because it's such a solo hobby, right? You can go to a writing group, you can sit down with your, with the other writers, but you're not going to like sit there and read each other's novels, like right there at the club, right? Um, and so a lot of what you do in writing is very, very solitary and very, and it's hard, right? You're doing, you're writing a hundred and a hundred thousand words and you are, it's like this, it takes a while and it's just this gesture into the void. You have no idea if anybody's going to like what you do at all so yeah i understand the mindset problems like i struggle with them a lot even now with um with n being as good <laughs> do i need tuition or do i need therapy um you know it, depending on on how bad your mindset is i mean i had a pretty i don't know I, I have a pretty positive brain in general so for me i just had to like read a lot of self-help books <laughs> And, like, you know, actually do some of the hokey stuff. Like, much as I hate to say it, affirmations work. It's super crazy, but they do. At least for a lot of people, they do. So you can try all that, all the, the silly stuff that people make fun of, but that actually, you know, actually works. But uh, if you have real 
you know, if you really are down on yourself, if you really don't believe in yourself, then therapy can't hurt. Because it may be something that's just really dumb that got fixed in your brain when you were a kid and you just haven't ever challenged it and having somebody there to challenge it for you may be what you need. So I'm just doing some little highlights here on the fur to bring up the fur. Yeah, but it takes a long time to read each other's stuff. You don't necessarily do it when you're at the writing group, Pendrake. But that was only older times, so maybe they did. Maybe they wrote solitarily and then they had people read their stuff. Or they had each other read their stuff. <laughs> oh, Kernico. Never. Never because there can never be enough dragons on the Discord. And you're one of the only people with the guts to, like, paint dragons. So. And actually uh, finish them. Though there are a couple. There have been a couple of dragons. I'll give it that. So we're kind of going up here, guys. And at this point, I'm kind of just, like, hitting the little strands of fur. Hey there, Bryce. How's it going? I thought of you the other day when we were driving up to Sacramento because I saw the exit for Reno. I waved in your general direction. But yeah, so... Really, I'm just looking, because this fur is sculpted really nicely. It's got all the all the little, like, lumps and stuff are kind of picked out. So this is one of those things where you could practice your fine motor. And you know what? A lot of people think their fine motor skills aren't that great, but often it's paint consistency. Often it isn't actually a problem with your, with your coordination. It's actually that your paint is too thin or you've got too much of it on the brush or both. Uh, David is going skiing. Uh, he's leaving on Thursday for Canada, for BC, for his uh, his cat skiing. And I am taking off on Thursday also to drive down. I decided since he was going to be out of town for five days, I would just drive down to Arizona and see my folks. So I won't be on on Thursday and Friday. Me and Kiki, you're going to jump in the car and we're going to go down. Do road trip. Road trip! Yeah, no problem, Turgeon. Thanks for showing up. Yeah, the big ones you get so. Yeah, we had to go up to Sacramento for a for a just family errand that we had to run for David's dad. But hey, Kiki, I know it's almost time. Can you settle? <laughs> she heard me say her voice, or her, heard me say her name, and now she's like squeaking at the gate. Squeaky, Kiki. Settle down, Pa. It's not, uh, it's actually, it is time, isn't it? She knows. She's like, hey, you said my name and it's time. So we'll have to keep, uh, we'll have to keep working on the fur. We'll have to keep working on the fur next time, I think, to get down, get down to this area where it's a little bit scratchier and it's going to be a little bit tougher. But as you can see the difference. Just one, just like, a, that was with a quick layer of shading over the base coat. And then when you go back and you can just hit the little specks of fur, then it, it, you can see the difference that it makes. So we've got a lot done on this figure today. We actually did the skin tones. We haven't highlighted the hair yet. Um, but my puppy is squeaky. Yes, and tomorrow is the last day before I leave for my road trip with the doglet. Down to the desert. And uh, we will be working on Ms. Yellow. Yay! My favorite. Where we are doing the pink underpainting thing. Or the magenta underpainting thing, as it were. Um, but yeah, so there we go. This is So be sure to show up tomorrow. Maybe we'll finally base coat the armor. Um, we'll get that uh, the bronze kind of blocked in that I want to maybe do. Um, so we can go totally yellow on this piece, except for the pink accents, which is... Uh, I think the way I'm the way I'm running at this point, uh, just because I think it'll be fun. I've never painted uh, like a mostly monochromatic model. Ah, sorry, Inara. But yeah, so we'll uh, 
we're going to continue mostly making this model yellow. Various shades of yellow. And yet making it still interesting enough. Which the pink helps with, to be honest. But yeah. So she's doing well. We, I really have to tackle her face at some point. But right now she looks good. All right, folks. Thank you so much for tuning in here today. And uh, yeah, tomorrow. Last day. And then I'm gone until... Yeah, adulting sucks. And then I'm gone until next... I'll be on Wednesday next week. Because I'll be driving back the two days after the weekend. I'll drive back on Monday and Tuesday. So... Yeah, I don't have anything done on her face yet. Yep, yep. Alrighty, and remember, this Friday, the block of rooms for ReaperCon goes up. As Quinny was saying, somewhere around noon-ish. Noon-ish. So, don't forget. Don't forget. Alright. Thanks, everybody, and I will see you again tomorrow morning. Bye-bye.